Hi, welcome back to Make Cool Stuff. Uh, if you're tuning in this time to see me talk about boats or another boat construction project, uh, this one's not going to be about boats. This is going to be about pinball machines. I'll probably get around to doing some more boat stuff perhaps in the spring or next summer. So, uh, Anyway, this video is going to be about uh, if you want to build your own pinball machine, the, the some of the things you might want to consider. Uh, they, they can be done uh, a home-built pinball machine can be a very inexpensive thing. You can basically, for just about free, except perhaps the cost of the pinballs, the steel pinballs themselves. So uh, that's, I'm going to just take you through uh, my thought process in building it and some of the design considerations you might want to take into account. Uh, you can, of course, just go out and buy a pinball machine. Uh, a good used pinball machine runs in anyway around here for around, they started around a thousand dollars and Go up to about around ten thousand dollars. A fixer upper, in other words, one that's not going to play, is going to cost you about two hundred dollars Canadian, and from there, you know, sky's the limit on, on what the repair is going to cost you. And if you've ever ever looked inside a pinball machine, I, I would recommend you go onto YouTube and have a look. It's 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 a daunting process to take one of those things apart and try to troubleshoot it. It's just just an enormous number of relays and switches. Uh, that control the logic in, in certainly in the old electromechanical machines and then the solid state machines it's it's a simpler machine probably a lot more reliable but uh, at least that's what they tell me down at the used pinball store and you're still talking a lot of money probably a good solid state machine you're probably talking fifteen hundred two thousand dollars anyway the kind of machine I'm talking about is the one you will build yourself and it'll probably cost you nothing maybe for a full-size cabinet well the cost of the wood and and the paint those probably paint wood glass are probably your three most expensive things it's going to cost you but you don't have to do it that way you could just do a very very simple uh, inexpensive cabinet um uh, i i'm going to show you a uh, sort of a whiteboard uh, prototype machine that I, I put together and it costs nothing it's honestly i think the only thing i've had to go out and buy i bought the, the balls the steel balls and uh a little bit, uh, just the play field uh, was a piece of MDF. I think it cost around ten dollars, something like that. A few odds and ends from the dollar store and Springs. I probably, I can't possibly have more than fifty, sixty dollars into the whole thing, and and I will reuse all those components when I get around to building the actual machine itself. Okay, so the video you're seeing right in front of you now is my whiteboard machine or my proof of concept, and it's just a a simple machine I put together with. Uh, Full-size play field, uh, kind of based loosely around the dimensions, I believe, of, uh, of an older Gottlieb machine, like a 1960s or 1970s Gottlieb machine. And with all my mechanisms in there, just the simplest, simplest machine, and testing out some of the scoring ideas and, and how, how the machine just kind of plays. So those are, you know, mechanical flippers, uh, my own design, and I've got a couple of holes in there that um, will also trigger a light if, if you get a ball in each one of the holes in the right and left you will get a, a light it's just to see if the it was, would reliably connect the circuit the ball running through the copper wires and then that sort of top kind of two triangle thing in the, in the middle where the balls are going in now is was sort of my main scoring idea and I was thinking you know one side might be a thousand points and the other side might be 200 points and and that's your main your main method of scoring with this machine so this is this is kind of like a purely mechanical machine, um, not unlike one I built when I was around 13 or 14 years old. Just uh, pinball was really popular back in the the mid to late 70s, and I really wanted one, but you know, of course, there were a lot of money, and at the time, you could even get uh, co um, commercially built machines uh, that they sold at, C at Sears, and even those were, you know, a lot of cash. You know, the kind of thing that you know your your parents weren't necessarily going to run out and spend that kind of money just to make you happy with a pinball machine. So. So this is, uh, I, from my way of thinking, I like to see my machine be full size. I like it to have a ball loading mechanism, which you can kind of see there right now. It's not all completely uh, uh, working just yet, but I, I, I want to see a machine that would work more or less as per a proper, you know, mechanical or commercial pinball machine. So a ball loading mechanism, um, Decent mechanical plunger, all that kind of stuff. I've got uh, those two uh, triangle-shaped uh, areas. Um, I just use rubber bands for my bumpers, and and uh, I've got a couple of uh, small uh, switches, uh, micro switches with with long uh, arms on them, 
that you can pick up, uh, I think, from AliExpress or Amazon. Very, very inexpensively. I think they were in the order of something like a dollar a piece. And I got those set up to trigger uh, an electric doorbell chime. So, which is more or less what they what they used back on the old um, electromechanical days before solid state machines uh, started triggering electronic sounds. I, I like the mechanical chimes myself, and that's a fairly easy feature to, to incorporate. So this is just this machine was just basically to see how it would play. Uh, it's, okay, I learned quite a bit do, doing this. Uh, this machine in particular, kind of um, because I, I would you know I would change things and play it a bit. Uh, I, I learned that like the the play field angle. Uh, the slope to it, uh, typically on the later machines, it's a, I think they typically recommend about six and a half degrees. And when I set the machine up to about six and a half degrees, it played radically different from when it was like set up for say three or four degrees. Some shots that were quite easy to make at three or four degrees were quite difficult at six and a half degrees, and vice versa. Some shots that were difficult at three three to four degrees became quite simple because the ball was would slow down rapidly uh, as it approached say some of those holes on the side. And, you know, it just can completely changed the, the character of the way the machine played. And I, I think the other thing I learned from building this machine was this was an attempt to do kind of like I was thinking, just a pure mechanical machine, your cheapest machine possible. And say when the machine, when a ball would drop in this, into the, either one of those right or left holes, I was going to add a mechanism to push the, hole, the ball back out of the hole when, when it was time to reset the machine and start a new game. Uh, I, I would have a mechanism that would sort of reload the balls, pull all the balls out of the holes, that sort of thing. Uh, that was my, my intention with this. Now, having played it a bit, I, I kind of have come to the conclusion that, uh, yeah, it's not a bad not a bad way to play, and certainly if, if money is tight, that's not a bad way to do it. You could, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll will at some point describe all the different scoring, ways of scoring with your machine, um, you, what your options are in, in, in terms of cost and considerations such as that. Okay, now I want to talk about some of the things you'll want to consider when designing your pinball machine. You can start off uh, with something very, very simple. This is something I think it's not beyond the capabilities of anybody. You see a lot of, um, you know, non-technical people putting these things together, uh, sometimes out of cardboard on YouTube, and uh, they're quite well done. Uh, these can be purely mechanical scoring, mechanical flippers, your own fabric Cated plunger, lots of elastic bands, that sort of thing, uh, powering the machine, working as, as bumpers, and uh, they use elastic bands for the plungers. Now, something a machine like this, for myself, I like to see the machine be more or less the way you would see a, a, a commercial machine. In other words, I want I want the machine to be, you know, if you put a piece of glass on top of it, whether you do or you don't, doesn't matter, but I'd like to see it so it's a hands-off type machine. I don't like to see, you know, balls being pushed out of pockets after you're done and, you know, having to reload the balls manually with your own, your own hands. So I, that's just my own personal preference. People are quite happy playing these machines, you know, with a lot of hands-on to, to guide the ball around the play field when, when it's time to reset the machine. So after you've, you've decided how, how simple the mechanics are going to be, you can add lights to the machine. Now it's fairly simple. You can, I, I just went to the dollar store and bought some Christmas lights, uh, little strings. Uh, you can get strings of say 35 lights for around $3 a string. They can be colored or clear. That's what I intend to do with mine. Uh, you can have sounds triggered by the switches. If you in, incorporate switches into your machine, and that can be buzzers or electric bells, solenoid bells. It can be uh, solenoid powered chimes like doorbells. Uh, and past that, then you can get to scoring. Um, and there's different ways of, of managing the scoring. Uh, older type machines used a, a back class uh, lit numbers. This was common in pre-war pinball machines, maybe right up to the, say, the 50s. Uh, then you can, past that, you can use simple digital counters. You can buy the, uh, a digital counter um, electronic circuit board uh, made in China for I'm gonna say 14 15 dollars that kind of thing uh, you would just have the switches trigger that and at the end of the game you when you reset the game you would have another uh, switch trigger the reset and that would zero the machine out you, you would be limited into how complex the scoring could be with it something that simple uh, it would simply be you hit the switch you get one point and it doesn't matter you can't you can't have it set up so that you hit one target you get 100 points one target gets 10 points you can't do that it's just Hit one switch, get one point. Uh, reset when done. Uh, and past that, then you can get into more sophisticated um, scoring mechanisms or powered flippers. 
pop, pop bumpers, uh, solenoid power mechanisms um, that, you, that you would see on conventional pinball machines. And from what I've... I haven't tried building any of these myself. From what I've seen, they're, there's a, they're not that successful. By the time you've built your own solenoid power flipper, personally, I think you're just better off buying either a brand new one or a used one from a pinball supply store. Uh, and, and that goes without saying, if you really want to build a, a, a nuts-on commercial pinball machine, you're better off just buying these mechanisms. Just, you know, they are expensive, though. So at the end of the day, I'm not sure you're, you know, you're going to be able to put together your own pinball machine for anything less than a commercial machine would cost. Probably not. Um, but it would be your own machine with your own rules and, you know, custom, custom built to your own taste. Uh, that's not what I'm doing with this particular uh video it, it'll probably be a series of videos from what i could tell so anyway let's move on so one of the first things you need to consider when you're contemplating building your your pinball machine is how are you going to keep track of scoring with your machine uh there's there's a number of methods tried and true methods uh that that it's, they kind of also correspond with the different eras of, of pinball machines um and I'll, I'll run through those just after i get through the scoring uh, methods Initially, machines were built, uh, they were just very, very simple machines based on, on a, a machine called a bagatelle, and it was balls landing in holes or in little areas that were sort of uh, sectioned off on the play field with pins. That's where pinball came from, pins and balls. And, and, and the machines started off with um, the ball would drop into a hole and then it would be mechanically pushed out with a little mechanism once the game was reset. And that's, that's sort of your simplest machine. Uh, after that, they started adding electronics uh, to the machine and in, in the form of relays and stepper wheels and and lights on the screen. And I played a, a few of these old machines at some old pinball machines in the UK. I think in, it must have been in the uh, late 80s. Uh, I think it was around Portsmouth or Weymouth or somewhere down there. And the machine, you would see, a mach the machine would have a, a back glass and along the back glass would be a series of numbers that would get backlit to show your your score so example for an example there would be one one scoring um setup would be millions and the other setup might be hundreds of thousands so as uh as you kind of increase your score on the machine it would go from 300,000 400,000 up to 900,000 and then it would trip over to a million and so on and so forth it would go up and, and the machine would also have different uh, levels of scoring so if you hit a particular target it might be worth more than another target and so on and so forth the way it's more or less the way it's done today that is not a, a bad approach for a home builder it's fairly simple um, you can use a, a device called an Arduino which is a microprocessor very very inexpensive microprocessor and once you've kind of got into the microprocessor end of things you can set up any sky's the limit on on the amount of uh, complexity you can build into your machine scoring uh, I've, I've only just kind of started getting into it now, so I can't go into too much detail on how that works. But yeah, I, I would recommend that that would be your next approach with scoring. Um, so back glasses and lights. A, you could do a nice vintage looking machine that way as well. And then from there on, they went into mechanical digit wheels, which uh, had stepper motors um, popping the digits uh, backwards and forwards uh, as, as the machine re reset. These are very, very complex. I don't recommend it. If you want that kind of machine, probably just best to go and buy a used machine. There's lots and lots of them out there. It was the standard way of, of keeping score on machines, say from the early 60s right through to the, the mid 70s or so. And I think they even, they even had some of these machines um, still being sold along when the, the electronic digital scoring uh, machines that you, you see today uh, came out. So, the, and the next one will be electronic digital scoring. And once again, that's easily managed with an Arduino microprocessor. So that would be digital displays, either LEDs, LCDs. Uh, you could use um, a, a small computer screen or something to, to do that. It's more or less, they use uh, a lot of dot matrix type displays now. Uh, that's, that's another way of doing it. And I, I don't think it's that expensive to get into that once you've mastered the whole Arduino technology thing. It's, it's a matter of figuring it out and then learning how to program the Arduino and from there on you can you know load up load the Arduino up with all the scores and the rules and uh, play strategies that you want um, that's probably the direction I'm going to go but I'm going to talk about everything I thought about as I put these things together
Okay, so that wraps up this episode. I'm going to produce a series of these design and build videos, which hopefully culminates in uh, me building a really, really good quality, you know, fun pinball machine uh, that you yourself can build as well. So I apologize for the length of the video. There's a lot of detail to cover. So anyway, if you if you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe. Thanks again. Bye.